Good morning, Muscatine. It is Wednesday. What's important to know about this Wednesday is we are 15 days until Jingle and Mingle. The holiday stroll is coming up next Friday. No, pardon me, not next Friday. Two Fridays from now. Um, we've got a ton of stuff planned. Remember, it's 5.30 to 8. We'll kick off with the Christmas tree lighting at Midwest One. We've got Tiny Tunes back this year for center stage, high view will be here with hot chocolate. Tiny students will also have uh, pictures with Santa, completely free. Um, then we've got Anna, Elsa, Olaf, the abominable snowman, uh, Chris, who's the, who am I, the Grinch, and Frosty. Frosty will be here again. Um, MPW will be here with their lit truck. The Wesley Handbell Choir, we've got the middle school orchestra, the high school band will be here. Uh, it just, it's, it's crazy. It'll be awesome like it has in the last two years. Make sure it's on your calendar. Um, the cool thing that's added this year, uh, two things actually, Heinz will have a Winter Wonderland. We've got some of our friends from Winter Wonderland have shown up early, floating around. Um, and then, uh, What's really cool is at 7.45, we've all seen the awesome job that MPW and Musco Lighting do with the bridge every year, lighting it up for Christmas, coordinating its music. We're actually gonna get to launch that at 7.45 during the stroll. So we'll have the music playing, we'll have it all, nice little viewing area uh, right over here by Midwest One on uh, Cedar Street in between Midwest One and Rule and Rule. Um, so it'll be the perfect uh, capstone of the night. So again, make sure that's on your calendar for uh, two Fridays from now. So the other thing, if you didn't see it last night, if you are a Hawkeye women's basketball fan, if you're a fan of basketball, if you're a fan of just plain awesomeness, we are giving away four tickets to Thursday night's game against Kansas State up at Carver Hawkeye Arena. All you've got to do is hop on discovermuscatine.com, our Facebook page, Twitter, wherever. There's a little link, click, enter. You can share it, you can earn extra entries. We'll give those away tomorrow morning on the show. And you'll be able to go see Caitlin Clark and the number two Hawkeyes in what can only be described as generational basketball. Like, if you haven't seen her play, whether you're a basketball fan or not, you need to go see this team play, so. Glad to be able to help do that for some folks. We'll have more of those throughout the season, so keep an eye out for them. And that's all the important stuff you need to know today, I think, except for a whole bunch of stuff we're about to talk about. <laughs> um, I have Teresa from Unity Point here yes. uh, to talk about Diabetes Month mm -hmm. and some, I, and I'm just gonna be blunt, what looks like delicious food that I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess is healthy too, right? Um, I don't like that word healthy oh. because we know that when you hear that word healthy, you think of uh, boring, right. blah, I, but this is healing and nourishing and it's gonna bring you the health that you want. I like that. And that's what I was actually going for, kind of the like, contrary to what you would think of the word healthy, this is actually, yes, that was, I need to choose my words better. Well, I've just no. been in this business Yeah, for a no, while, I, I, I totally get it. Yeah, that. like... Healthy it's, just puts people off right away. It does. And, <laughs> so. well, it does. Well, <laughs> it shouldn't, but you, <laughs> you know, I, I think back to even when I was younger and stuff, like, when you heard healthy back in the day, it was like grass, right? Uh -huh. Like, it was just yeah. bad. It was... 
but um, I'm just like I honestly want to skip over like all the stuff we're supposed to talk about and, and just get to the we've food. Got a long but, ways with food. But the catalyst for a lot of this is diabetes, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And something that um, you know, it's like 130 plus million people in America fight it, or and that's like one in three. Yes, right. One that's, in three, yes, are pre-diabetes, that's right. what, pre-diabetes. So they've got that window that they can do a couple things and keep it away from diabetes. It's a gift, that window. And it, it kind of is because it's kind of like that little pre-alarm, right? Yeah. That's like, and, and what's great, I don't know if it's great that we know that this stuff, but when you have early morning signs that are blatant and easy to recognize and more importantly reversible mm -hmm. you can't ask for like any better of a road sign than hey this path goes literally right here mm -hmm. you have an option you can turn around and go back or you can keep going yeah and yeah. that's what pre-diabetes is right yes 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 so what um what are some things that people would be experiencing if they're in that pre-diabetes, diabetes range, mm -hmm. you know, like as far as symptoms or things that they might notice about how their, their bodies changed or things like that? Well, we don't have, no, there's not any real stark symptoms of pre-diabetes. There's stark symptoms for diabetes. Um, there is this darkened spot that you might find on your skin that won't go away. It tends to be on your armpits, neck, or groin. It's an accumulation of insulin, actually, in your blood that's there. That might happen. What might happen is you might see some of your infections just not heal as quickly. Wounds, things like that. You might just, if you're really aware of your body, you might see something like that. Now, you know, so we don't get a lot of warnings, so that's where seeing your doctor every year and asking for your blood sugar and your hemoglobin A1C because yep. we can tell clearly. So, but when we get into the di diabetes, then we have things like frequent urination, excessive thirst, unexplained weight loss. Now this is not good weight loss. Um, it's your super low energy, um, possibly blurry vision, um, irritability. So those are things we, we classify as those as diabetes. Now you might notice if you're really aware of your body and the pre-diabetes range, but most people aren't seeing the symptoms. So, so, and again, that's one thing that we've talked about, like with every provider, every health person that we've ever spoken to on the show, prevention and maintenance is key, right? Like the regular checkups, the you know, knowing your body, paying attention, being aware is 99% of the battle. You know, we were talking about breast cancer and it's, you know, doing the regular checkups, it's doing the mammogram, it's like, oh, hey, this is different. And then being able to say, okay, now I'm going to go get it checked, right? Yeah. And it's the same kind of a thing here, right? Mm -hmm. A1C, like, here's the thing, we've all seen commercials for medicine that covers A1C, right? We, like, I can't think of the name of the one I see all the time, but like literally probably once a commercial break you see mm -hmm. and you hear I'm talking about. So there's a reason it's important and it affects a lot of people, right? Otherwise, you know, big pharma wouldn't be advertising for it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but when you have I mean, do most, I know my physician, uh, Rachel Kramer, we talk about it regularly because obviously mm -hmm. look at me, I'm kind of like spec kid for it. Right. Um, but is that something most physicians and providers do take that initiative? Like, is there like a certain age, certain bracket, or is it something people should be like making sure that they are asking about every time? Well, I, I, every, every physician is wanting to help you to partner, to take care of your health. So they're going to be doing at your well visit, your annual visit, certain things. That being said, they have a very limited time mm -hmm. and um, they're trying to do the best with that limited time. So you really need to be your advocate because they're also looking at ranges and things and you, you might want to do better than the average too in some respect. So, um, so it's, it really, I'm a big uh, proponent of being an advocate, your own advocate and asking mm -hmm. the questions 
knowing your numbers, knowing your lipids, your cholesterol, your triglycerides, your HDL, your LDL, your A1C, those Which, are all important things. So here's the thing. I, I'm going to do this because uh, I want to show you guys how easy this can be. Um, but I'm not going to be able to blur this out, so Chris, don't zoom in too closely, although I don't really care. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm locking into Unity Points my chart. Okay. okay. Yeah. And the newest update, this is actually ridiculously awesome because uh, I am sort of a, I can be a tech nerd from time to time. Um, let me, it's handy, no password, biometric, super <laughs> handy. Um, but you can just go into like test results. Yeah. And um, so like, let's look at lipid panel. Wait, uh, yeah, let's go lipid panel just for, oh, yep. So you get like this nice magical, super easy yeah. to see like, green, yellow, but what's really cool that's new is the view trends, right? So you can actually uh, see this. Just, I gotta this, check into that. This just came out like, because uh, what happened? I haven't seen mine. Well, so Melissa and I both just had our normal checkups, right? And our blood work, whatever. And I was looking at mine and I'm like, oh, hey, I can see this. And she's like, I can't see that. Mm -hmm. And my phone had updated and hers hadn't. So that's the only reason we noticed, right? <laughs> yes. But it's ridiculously awesome. So, I mean, this is something that you can... You know, when they talk great. about like knowing your numbers, yes. you don't need to memorize them and track them and all that stuff because they do it for you. You just need to know like, oh, hey, like my cholesterol runs 150 to 200, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I don't even need to know the numbers. I just need to know I'm kind of near the top yeah. of where I probably should be. Okay. So don't be stupid, right? Um, but like, you know, all the other stuff's in the green. So, okay, life's, life's good. So it's really easy mm -hmm. now with tools like my chart. Um, yeah. And nobody call Unity Point, say anything about privacy, HIPAA. Nobody say anything. I released it on my own, blah, blah, blah. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I know somebody else say that. Um, yeah. But as you look at, like, risk factors, sorry to totally go off script. Yeah, I know this um, is important stuff. As we talk about, like, risk factors for diabetes, what are some of the key things that you would say, hey, if these are the things that you're, if you fall into these, make sure it's on your radar. Well, we know like uncontrollable risk factor would be your family history. So you got a parent, a sister, a brother with diabetes. So that's you, um, age. As we age, our insulin production goes down. So we struggle. We tend to. So that's just a normal thing, but there's a lot we can do. It doesn't mean we're going to have diabetes someday. So um, and then we start getting into um, some of the other things that we can control, like our activity. Just being active, and I'm a real big proponent of movement every day, something. Um, so, and I know schedules are tough, but even a 10 minute walk after a meal, that's magical. So, and it feels good. So 10 minutes, you feel better mood, you're just, you feel more awake. So um, activity. So you're at risk if you aren't, of course, then that uh, puts you at a higher risk. Um, so eating, so food. So, and it's, it doesn't have to be complicated. Now, if you have diabetes, do get in to see a diabetes educator because they will give you customized, individualized help. But if you're in that pre-diabetes or if you want to even look at not even nudging up to the pre-diabetes, there's some things you can easily do. And even without diabetes, I want to make sure my blood sugars are not climbing up steep yep. and dropping. So, because if they climb up steep, even though they're normal, you know, the top, yep. the bottom, and we call that kind of like the thermostat threshold, if they're climbing steep regularly, so you're maybe not combining your food in the way or spacing it out or, you know, some of those key principles, inflammation. We know that you accumulate inflammation. So even though I don't have quote unquote diabetes or prediabetes, that's something I'm concerned with is inflammation. So one thing that we should maybe take half a step back and most all of this stuff we're talking about uh, relates to like type two diabetes, correct? Versus like type one where yes. it's, uh, cause I know I was just thinking about, there's a, a guy that I play racquetball with. He's got type one diabetes. Mm -hmm. Like there's, it's, you know, I'm going to say perfectly healthy other than he doesn't have insulin function. Right. That's well. it. Bingo. And so his is, not like a weight related issue or things like that. So one thing, kind of keep that all in scale folks mm -hmm. as we're talking about this is yes. this is all in that type two diabetes lane. 
And if you want to hear about what they're calling type 3 diabetes, according to Dr. Saga, go out and check out his dementia series. Yes, uh, he's great. That's on discovermuscatine.com. It's on PCTV, all that fun stuff. Uh, but this is all in that type 2 lane, that self, I'm going to call it self-inflicted diabetes because that's kind of the way I always think about it. Um, because, and, and you mentioned like those spikes and stuff, and it's really interesting to watch uh, him because he, he has a pump, right? Yes. And, you know, every morning we play racquetball. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty intense, right? Mm -hmm. And he's, oh my goodness, I, I'm not going to say how old exactly he is, but let's call it late 70s, right? Mm -hmm. Still playing racquetball. And he, uh, he, he watches it the entire time and he's managing it with sugar tablets and like all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's actually really educational to watch him do it because mm -hmm. you see all this stuff that you talk about with like type two diabetes in, in real play in real time, yeah. right? Like yeah. you can see when his blood sugar is low, like in, in these spikes that you were talking about, right? Mm -hmm. You can see when his blood sugar is low, he's, he's got a huff, tough time, right? Mm -hmm. But what's crazy is when it spikes up, it's actually just as bad sometimes for him, mm -hmm. you know? And mm -hmm. you don't always think about that, right? And mm -hmm. then I think about, admittedly, the stuff I throw into my body. I'm like, you idiot, you're doing the same thing that Jim goes through but you're doing it to yourself, right? Um, so again, just kind of like, as, as we talk about like managing diabetes and the steps you can take, yeah. that's just kind of like the one thing that always sticks out in my mind because it's an experience I have. And I know he won't care if I share that. We've, he's talked about it before, but. Um, so what are some of the other things that you can do to help kind of manage this? If you're feeling like you're in the pre-diabetes or somebody, sa your physician says you are, what are some of the like, first sort of things that you're going to do stepwise to kind of back down the, the threshold? Well, um, assuming that you're in the pre-diabetes or before that. Yeah. So um, we're going to look at our meal composition, going more whole food and at making sure that the whole food that we have a good fiber source, that's going to be your vegetables, fruits, whole grains, intact grains, those sort of things combined with healthy protein sort of thing in your meal composition. Also giving your body a break so that you're not just snacking, grazing all day long. So giving yourself three to four hours between meals, or if you like your small mini meal snacks, then two hours between. So those kind of simple things combined with movement for many people, that's all they need. Well, and I would think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, you hear about fasting and you hear about grazing and you hear Ultimately, it comes down to what works for you, right? Like yes. it's, you know, try something for a while and, and I'm going to totally make something up here. Rachel will probably scream at me for this, but whatever. Um, if you, if there's something that works in your world, try it, check with your physician, A, make sure it's like legit, right? Mm -hmm. And monitor it, right? Like check and see how, see how you feel. And if it works for you, run with it. If it doesn't, make some adjustments until you get to that sweet spot and that's where the relationship with your provider comes in ridiculously important, right? Yeah, because, your partners. Yeah, so. and it's like, hey, I want to try this because, like, you know, my schedule is crazy and Rachel knows. So my, my eating is horrible. Every time she's like, Chris, prepare your meals. I'm like, I know, and it just doesn't happen. I'll be honest. <laughs> well, that's what we have but, to cook. Yeah, no, but for. that's, and actually, you know, it was great. I'm like, she finally gave us the segue to food. I'm like, yes. No, but, and, and this is... What's crazy is I would eat all this stuff. I just don't get ahead of it, right? Yeah. Um, no. And Miss and I, for whatever reason, we just, it's something we've always struggled with. But it, just looking at what I see here, I'm like, all right, we could, we could find a way to make this happen. Um, and that actually leads in perfectly to the, the cooking classes. Yes. And the, so it's, it's cooking with heart, right? Yes. And so, That's a series. Yep. Yes. And so what does that all look like? Because I'm, I'm guessing some of this stuff's going to be in it. Yes. But what's like the ultimate goal? Who's it for? And then we'll get into the what looks like really good food. Sure. Yeah. So the classes are four classes. They're held at um, the Trinity campus. We have in-person and virtual options. Mm -hmm. So we get a lot of people from Muscatine virtually, which I love. So um, they're held for an hour, an hour and a half, depending upon the series. Um, if you're in-person, you get a taste. So that's advantage. So, um, and you get a binder with the recipes and some handouts. Um, the format of the class is I do a nutrition interactive, engaging presentation for like half the class. 
And then the last half is going over two to four recipes step by step, talking about substitutions you can do, seasonings you can kick up, turn up, turn down, you know, just how to make it your own. Yeah. Because you need to make these dishes delicious for right. you. Yep. That's the bottom line. This is not medicine. This is food that should be enjoyed. Right. And that's, you know, the interesting thing is like, I used to hate cauliflower, right? I, I, well, let me rephrase that. I used to think I hated cauliflower. Ah, oh, there we go. Right. And I don't remember what it was. I don't know. Five, 10 years ago, I ended up having some, so I'm like, that's actually not that bad. So like I eat cauliflower regularly now. Right. Yeah. Um, Oh, I know. It was on a like an everything bagel or something. Like yeah. all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, that's yeah. not like that's not what I remember, right? Uh -huh. um, and so I would also again toss out to folks: if you think you don't like something, give it another try somewhere along the line. Thank you. Yes. Because yes. I, I've watched my son, who's 12. You know, his eating habits have been all across the board. Mm -hmm. Things that he used to love, he hates, and he looks at you like you're crazy if you mention it. <laughs> And other things that he used to hate, he loves. And we've all got to be that way. We go through phases. We go through whatever. So just, you know, there's nothing in here that's going to kill you if you put it in your mouth and don't like it, right? Well, and also... Oh, I thought you were going to say, well, yes, there is. Yeah. No. <laughs> I, th no. I thought this Not was like either. a cer certain Not special either. sushi or whatever. Like, no. You know, no. no. It, I, vegetables are an area of struggle for a lot of people. And I like to... Um, keep ask them to keep that open mind because vegetables can be prepared all different ways. Yeah. So roasting broccoli is way different than raw broccoli. Right. Blanched cauliflower is way different than raw. And if you combine it with the right things, like a sour and a sweet and garlic, oh my goodness, yeah. it bursts. You know, yeah. So Hy-Vee has a uh, little shout out to Hy-Vee. They have this, it's like a, Calif I think it's a California salad or something. It's like mm. broccoli, cauliflower, uh, I don't remember. It's one of the yeah. ones that I grab, carrots, uh -huh. whatever. And it's got like a little bit of ranch on it, like yeah. the powder that's, I don't know exactly what they do, but super good. It's yeah. not, I'm sure it's not perfectly health healthy, the bad word that we're not supposed to use, but like it's still way better than oh, French fries and whatever. So oh my that's, the kind of thing that like all it takes is a little ranch. Okay. Life's fine. Right. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Yeah. So, okay. I'm just diving in. What do we have here? What we have here is pumpkin chia seed pudding that you can top with baked oh. apples. I just took the apples and put them in the microwave yep. for two minutes. That's it. Nothing special, but it's like yummy baked apples. Gotcha. So you can put those on top. You can put dark chocolate chips. Chris. You can put some walnuts on did top. You, did you grab the spoons? So, ooh, yes, yeah, we need spoons. We're taste them. Totally, so. yeah. I'm like, all of a sudden I'm going, wait, wait, where are the spoons? Like, I'm not going to not try this. <laughs> so the, the cool thing is this has um, got chia seeds, okay? So they look like little bird seeds. So, yeah. and they have per tablespoon five grams of fiber. So they are, your blood sugar is going to just like very, very slow climb. It's not going to be this. Right. So it's got pumpkin. Just canned pumpkin. It's got a little bit of plant milk in there. You can use skim milk or almond or soy. And a little bit of um, maple syrup and vanilla. And then, of course, we've got to have the pumpkin spice. And that's it. We just blenderized it, poured it in, let it set. Done. Okay, so here's the thing. Maple and vanilla are two of my favorite things. Mm -hmm. Plus pumpkin is, like, right there. So this has to be good. Yeah, Am yeah. And it's like, it's got like five grams of fiber per serving. So, and it's got vitamin A from the pumpkin there. So we could add the walnuts. Nuts are great. So, yeah. So here's a quick question. Cause this is, uh, and when you get the canned pumpkin for the pie, is that, mm -hmm. what, is, what is that? Is it just, it's just what, pumpkin. This is it's not just pumpkin like mashed up pumpkin. Feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That's all it is. So it's got fiber. It's got antioxidants. It's got carotenoids it's bursting with stuff it's a whole food just put okay, got it awesome. so that, okay can i try some yes yes would you like chocolate chips or apples uh, no, uh, or? apples sure chocolate not so much. okay walnuts of course and cinnamon Wait, i have a little uh, cinnamon let's here let's try it without cinnamon and then okay. i'll try adding a little cinnamon okay because it seems like that would that could possibly change it a chocolate. yes so yes. Well, let's, we'll see what we got Okay, so 
pumpkin. Yes. Chia. Chia, which Plant theoretically, milk. those are fairly like inert, aren't they? Like you don't really taste them. No, it's yeah. it's actually it performs kind of like egg. It's a thickener. It's what makes it hard. It, it, it's set up. Gotcha. So, okay. but it's got lots of great stuff for your heart and for blood sugar control. So, now, go Ooh, ahead. Miss, just make some for dinner. <laughs> Please. Thank you. So, See you tonight. Love you. <laughs> so, it's just so easy. And it's, I mean, it really took me like seven minutes last night to do in the blender, put it in the containers, put it in the refrigerator, and it was done. I pulled it out this morning, half awake, to come here. That's, this is, this actually, so I'm trying to figure out how to describe this. It tastes like pumpkin pie filling, but almost like a slushy, like a, a, um, you know, like when they take like the ice and they froth it up. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like that texture, but pumpkin pie. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a good pumpkin flavor. It's not gaggy sweet. It's Mm. not, you know, it's, it's. Pumpkin with a little bit of the pudding and the apple. I like the apple. Yeah. Now, these aren't warm, but if you did them warm, that would be even. Yeah. Okay. So just like if you a want to do bit, a little bit, it's just be, like, yeah, I don't just. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no. Yeah. 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 That's why. Cinnamon's great for. I mean, it's. it's that's why I was flat. trying to like. It's um, and you know, the, the research is not strong, but there's some research out there to say it helps with blood sugar control. So it doesn't hurt. We'll call it anecdotal. Yes, yes, so... That means it can't hurt, folks. Yeah, so like, you can put it in whatever. It can't, hurt, it can't hurt, might help, just do it. Yes, right? yes, especially if you love it, if it's going to up mm. the flavor quotient. Yeah, cinnamon definitely works, too. <sighs> so, yeah. you got a new thing. Okay, so, so yeah, you're, you're one for one so far, and oh, you can come I back anytime. Next one. Okay, so this next one, the salad here. Mm-hmm. So, like we were talking before the show, I have a gentleman that took the classes... So, and he, he was diagnosed back up. He was diagnosed with diabetes. His A1C was high and he set out to lower his A1C and lose weight. Okay. So when he focused on his A1C rather than just losing weight, he found that his A1C dropped and the weight dropped and it was easier. So not focusing on the weight. I please just focus on getting your blood sugars in better control and listening to your hunger Mm -hmm. so you're not overeating. Mm. So one thing that helped me, not that you can necessarily tell all the time, but it's really easy to confuse hunger and thirst. Oh yes. A lot of people, this was something I experienced. I, I mean I still do on a regular basis. Like I'm getting ready to go to bed, I'm hungry. I'm not really hungry. I'm just super thirsty because I didn't drink the water all day, whatever. So I usually try to chug a glass of water, wait a little bit. And if I'm still hungry, I'm hungry. Right. I love that. uh, Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So keeping things not overeating is just, that would help so many people. So it's not, you know, so, um, so the cauliflower salad is so easy. It, it, we always, it's raw cauliflower that we broke up into florets. So, and we've got pistachio in there, lightly salted pistachios, I love. Um, We've got super great pomegranate. It's the season for pomegranates, they're beautiful. So I love getting them whole and then you just kind of squeeze the seeds out, kind of, and the seeds start and you can pound it and they'll come out. We'll make a mess if we try it now, but. Sounds like um, we'll do that at the end. (laughs) So so the pomegranate seeds add pretty Christmas red and they're delicious in there, added in their crunch. Uh, We've got green apple, green sour apple because it it matches really well to cruciferous. Cruciferous has that unique, stronger (laughs) flavor that is a putting off point for many people, but you gotta know how to work it. So the sour apple really helps. And so if you could, the cruciferous family, what all falls in that? Okay, well, it all comes from the mustard flower. You know that? The beautiful wild mustard flower. All of them. Broccoli, Brussels sprouts, bok choy, cauliflower, kale. All of them come from mustard wildflower. Really? Yes. I did not know that. Yes, that beautiful yellow flower. So there so. is, I am going to, again, go off script here for one warning. If you do eat a lot of these at a time and you're not necessarily used to it, 
you you may have a little bit of an upset tummy for a little bit, grumbly and stuff, but it goes away. Like you get used to it. Right? Certain ones yes. do. Yeah. Kale for some people might. Yep. But um, but it's little, small amounts usually well, are fine. Yeah, because like, and the only reason I say this is I figured out that I really liked the cauliflower, uh, the broccoli, the little the, combo thing. So yes. I ate a whole bunch of them. Like, oh boy, my stomach's not ready for that. And my stomach's like a tank normally, right? Yeah. Um, but and then you know once I kind of figured it out, it was all good and like it was totally fine. Yeah. But just yeah. a little heads up. Yeah. Yeah. So, Your family but, will thank you. Well, uh, <laughs> yes. So the dressing is very simple. We have extra virgin olive oil, uh, a little maple syrup, a li and this is kind of the secret, is balsamic. It's white balsamic. Okay. You could use the regular balsamic, but guess what would happen when we stir that in there? It'd be red. It'd be like dark. Oh, purple. right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so this is white. You can get this. I thought it was going to like blow up or something. Like <laughs> always add acid, right? You know, I thought it was yes. like we are going to no. like do the elephant toothpaste or something. Yes. No. So in a little lemon, and then that's it. So most of those things you have around the house, you just might need to pick up the white balsamic. Mm -hmm. But we've got maple syrup around. We've got uh, extra virgin olive oil, lemon. You can use jar lemon. And then put that on as dressing. That's it. And it's done. And this goes like gangbusters. And the gentleman that um, he lost 34% of his body weight on his journey to get his A1C mm -hmm. down, and he's off diabetes medications, he has this almost daily. Now, I don't recommend that you like make a diet out of this, a program, but right. the idea is for him, this is delicious and it helps control his blood sugars. Well, and you know, the, the thing there is like all of anything and nothing of every, or wait, I totally said that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Doing, eating just all one thing is never a great idea. Yes. Right. No. Like. You've got to keep some variety. If you want to have something in your diet every day, that's one thing. But there's nothing that's going to be like superfood that you eat for breakfast, lunch, dinner, nope. every day, all nope. day. Nope. Bad idea. Yeah. Right? A variety is great. So, okay. I want you to try. Okay. So. It's, Dig in there. It's a little it's tough like, with a. We, yeah. A little. Yeah. Is this, this is more like get, a get fork an thing? There. Yeah. A little, it's, it's more a, of a fork thing. Yeah. Maybe? Probably. Sure. But we're going to make it work. So. Mm. That's not what I expected. Yeah. And I just, I love it because you don't have to cook the, the cauliflower. Because a mm -hmm. lot of times when you blanch, you take a little of the bitterness off. Mm -hmm. But we're working with the bitterness with a sour apple and the dressing that has the balsa, white yeah. balsamic like, and a little bit of sweetness, just a little bit. So it just works so it, wonderfully it together. It does. It's like, um, I'm trying to, you know, you'd think a guy that hosts a TV show would be better with words. Um, it's like a two-stage thing, right? Like you get the texture yeah. up front and then like the balsamic vinegar like kicks in yes. and like sort of like, it's like a little adventure in your mouth. Like yes. it's like a couple stage process. It's kind of neat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that sour apple got the sweet mm -hmm. and sour that just runs really well. So yeah, now you can try a red apple. I tell people all the time, if you want to try something because you your tastes are different, go for it. But I do find most people stick with the green apple for this salad. Now I snack on Fuji apples, but for my salads with cruciferous, I usually choose the sour green apple. Okay, so yeah, get, yeah, get some of the, the pomegranate, pistachio and yeah, the pomegranate. So the um, other neat thing is it's, it's a multiple texture function inside your mouth. So You've got the crunchy from the cauliflower. Mm -hmm. You've got the pomegranates are like kind of soft. They're softer. They're, but they're yeah, a they're little yeah formed. Right. So, but and like the apple kind of mushes down really quickly. Mm -hmm. So you have like a couple of different flavors, a couple of different textures, all going on at once. Yeah, you explained it beautifully. So it just mm, yeah, it's really good. So yeah, so. I love that. So that's, you know, in the cooking classes, we do dishes like this because it's about the first class for diabetes. We do the cauliflower salad and fudgy brownies with raspberry. So raspberries. So raspberry and chocolate is delicious. So and see now I raspberry chocolate. I'm out on both of them. Uh, now, if you could do it with white chocolate, I could probably pull. OK, oh, I'm, I'm a chocoholic. So, you know, interesting. Something about this that I just noticed. 
What's something that, that um, Rachel always tells me because I'm, you know, eating in my truck on my way somewhere, whatever, is to slow down when I eat, right? Yeah. And drink and, you know, but, but mainly slow down. And this makes you slow down. Watch this. That's a good point. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's got a lot of, you got to chew. Mm-hmm. Like, so it's got lots of positive properties there for what you, your goal in mind with controlling blood sugars with just overall good health. So this is, you know. Okay, how long did that take me to chew? I mean, that was like 20 seconds. <laughs> Felt like a long time, right? Okay, we need to time it next No, time. but I mean, seriously, like, it will help you be more aware of what you're doing because yeah. you're not, it's not like French fries where you can literally just like yeah. stuff them in and stuff them in and they go down and before you know it, Very true. you've eaten way more than you probably wanted to. You, I mean, to eat more of this than you wanted to, you would have to like focus and try because, oh. you know. Well, and here's the other thing. By the time you got to that point, your stomach would be like, oh. Yes. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. No, that's actually, that's a really, um, I can see how for the gentleman you were talking about, it's, it would be really easy to sort of make this like an anchor in mm -hmm. what you do every day. Because I'm going to guess you can make a fairly big batch of it, um, put it in a bowl, or you could even, I'm going to, it doesn't, the vinegar, does, like you could probably eat this with your hands if you had, could wash them afterwards if you had to, um, you know, throw them in a Ziploc bag, yeah. go, and it, it could be like an easy thing to have in there. And you know, it's going to, I'm guessing with all the fiber, it's going to keep you full, oh, pardon me. Mm -hmm. full for a decent period of time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Does it have to be refrigerated? In, no. No, I, I mean, like, you know, you, you, that's where you're yes. store it, but well, yes, yes, you can have right. it like eight hours out. Right. That's, so, yes, that's right. Yes. Obviously, yes. no, don't just let it sit out on the table <laughs> all week, but like you yeah. could toss it in the fridge when you're done, throw it in a bag, take it with you in the morning yes. and it would be fine. Yeah. We kind of call that like a bulk prep. Mm -hmm. So, and this is one of those that many people, I, I, and that's one of my hacks that I do for myself is I prep a bulk, something that easily will keep for four days mm -hmm. and you can eat off of this three, four days, you know, for the fourth day, it might not be guest worthy of serving, but it right. still tastes great. Right. So, yeah. Well, and that's something that obviously you can manage how you prep it too. Yeah. So, okay. Let's, um. I want to make a mess. Let's do the pomegranate. Is there, was there anything else big that you okay, wanted to make sure you told people? Uh, well, just sign up for the class online. Yep. Mm -hmm. So unitypoint.org slash cooking with heart. So the diabetes class, the next one starts February 7th Okay. Um, on a Wednesday evening. I have other classes that start in January, January 9th. And January 17th, I have a uh, cooking with heart for cancer and cooking with heart foundational. Gotcha. So the foundational is anybody who wants to transition to delicious eating that's going to heal your body. Gotcha. Perfect. Okay. okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. So. Okay. So, <laughs> so we're going to do. And I have never. Okay. I mean, I've eaten okay, pomegranates. This... I have never. I'll okay. be honest. I don't know that I could have told you what a pomegranate looked like. It's beautiful. And, you know, this. I picked a beautiful one to show here. But sometimes they look a little more. Um, character in it and it still ends a little up more character what is a little more character a little more raunchy on the outside a okay more. but what's it right but what does that look like is it like it's brown like or dull and brown oh okay and like not right. so round shaped okay so but there's i always open them up and they look great okay. on the inside so you have it like this way you don't have it top to bottom you have it this way okay so you show this and then you're going to squeeze like you just kind of you can we're going to hear it here, I'll, I can. You hear oh that? that's so, like and then oh that's and then we're going to take it in our hand and then if we had a wooden spoon that we can just start hitting it with a, a, a more metal type or wooden oh. spoon object and it starts to fall through so you can see that it's almost it kind of almost is like a really hard avocado function like, and you can see the seeds are coming out there. So, oh my goodness. Yeah. That's, so, and then you can kind of 
top it. You, uh, oh, that was, oh, Chris, did you get that? <laughs> oh, that, you know what? That could be like pimple popper. <laughs> that had to look, was that super satisfying? Oh, my son would say that yeah. looked like it was super. I think you're getting red. You're getting pomegranate on you. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, well, that's all right. So you need to That'll be the. <laughs> So, so there we go. It's beautiful and the juice. So I usually will do. Chris, could you grab her a wet paper towel real quick? <laughs> yeah. Strain the juice and I'll put the juice in a wine cup glass and drink the juice like it's wine because it's beautiful. It's delicious. Oh. So. Oh, like um, straight up. Thank you. Holy cow. So that's, that's kind of what you end up with. That's, that looks fun. I think you it could. It is. It is. Oh, you got this one? It is fun. You just don't. You want to wear red. You want to be prepared. Yeah, you want to be prepared. Um, so. That's why you know what this. This has been through way worse than than pomegranate. So uh, holy cow! Yeah, they're in season till January, so you can stock up. I will get probably three, four, the beginning of January, and then they're good for like three weeks. So long you don't open them up. Gotcha. So they can sit on the counter. So they can be decorations too. Yes, they're they can beautiful. Be, they can be like Christmas decorations. That and you then just then then they to, become yeah. January football snack food. Yeah, yeah. So you learned how to deseed a pomegranate. Yeah, I think I'm still miss that one's you. <laughs> that one I would. Is, here's the thing that would if I did that it would end up like on the ceiling. It would end up everywhere. Oh, but, but the fun you would have. You could do it yeah, out the, the fun. Patio. Yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. Like go out in the garage. Like I could set up like all our drop cloths and everything, and like you know, prep for a couple pomegranates. But um, holy cow! First of all, thank you. The this pumpkin, yeah, maple pumpkin, vanilla. Cheese. This stuff. Yeah. It's it's awesome. Like this is that was really good. Um, it would be a perfect like alternative to pumpkin pie yeah. at Thanksgiving. Okay. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So they're, you know, delicious food that is healing, nourishing, that you can crave. Yeah. So quick recap here. Let's see if I got this right. See if I was listening. A, communicate well with your provider regarding things like weight, blood sugars, things like that, to be aware of where you are, to be able to track it. Um, if you start floating into that pre-diabetes, diabetes range, remember that if it's in the type two lane, right, it's something that you can absolutely control and manage. Mm -hmm. uh, you just have to make some good choices, as we always tell our son, right? Mm -hmm. And those good choices don't have to be painful, right? No, no. Like, this, like, exactly. literally, guys, I'm, I'm not... I mean, I'll try anything and I'll eat pretty much anything, but this is actually good. This is actually stuff that I would like, like, hey, are we going to have the cauliflower, whatever. Um, and it's not hard, right? I mean, the pomegranate thing, that might be a little hard, but short of that, every, everything else is like a blender, a yeah. can of blender and some drops of stuff, right? Yeah, stuff that so, you very well could have around. Well, so. and that's actually what I was kind of just thinking is, I know we have chia seeds at the house. I Ooh. know we have syrup. I know we have vanilla. We even have some illegal Mexican vanilla, but I didn't say that out loud. <laughs> uh, well, okay. and actually, I shouldn't say that. It's like handmade vanilla that one of somebody gave us. It, it reminds you of like the Mexican vanilla kind of thing. Um, cinnamon, yeah. I mean, like you, it's, it's all there, right? Yeah. And you got a yeah. blender, so yeah. rock on. Holy cow. You can do it. Yeah, Teresa. So, and it's you. delicious. So yeah, yeah, yeah super good. Ha, sign up. We'll make sure that in the comments we put a link to the uh, healthy cooking classes. Mm -hmm. um, and wow, this was fun. This I'll say this. Let's see. Make sure I don't offend you. Of all the Unity Point folks that have hopped on here, you're the tastiest. Oh, I would say that. I like that. that I you, like the, that. Yeah, the most flavorful. How about we go with that? Ooh. Um, yeah, super good. Awesome, yeah. awesome, awesome stuff. Teresa, thank you. Oh, it was an you. absolute blast. Uh, Muscatine, don't forget a couple things. You got two weeks till Jingle and Mingle. If you want to try and get some Hawkeye women's basketball tickets, hop on to discovermuscatine.com. And remember to go attack the rest of the day with an enthusiasm unknown to mankind. Have a good one.